following sponsored program are strictly those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Welcome to the Hallie Elise Show, featuring your host, empowerment psychic, Hallie Elise. She is an author, psychic, and media personality, and has been listed as one of the top 100 psychics in America. Empowerment Psychic Hallie Elise shares the spiritual, metaphysical, holistic, and magical powers of the universe. Follow Hallie on her website at HallieElise.com, and all her shows can be seen via live stream video. Now, here's your host, Empowerment Psychic Hallie Elise. Hello, everyone, and once again, thank you for tuning in to The Hallie Elise Show, whether you're listening on the radio or you're watching on web TV. And by the way, if you are listening in on the radio and you're thinking, whoa, where, how, how do I do the whole web TV thing? It's really quite easy. Just go to my website, HallieElise.com, and uh, there's a link on the front page that says something about the show. You'd have to ask my webmaster exactly what it is because if I'm not looking at it, I'm not quite sure. But uh, just click on that and you can see the live feed. And the nice thing too is if you're catching part of the show but not the whole show and you're like, ah, oh, darn, I wanted to hear that, you can always go back to my page after the fact and the, the shows are archived. Usually within 24 hours, but sometimes maybe not. <laughs> it just depends on what's going on. But typically speaking, 24 hours. So you can kind of go there and, and see what's what. <laughs> My producer is breaking my chops over here. Better watch out. I'll put you in front of the camera. Then what are you going to do? <laughs> so just switch the camera around. Anyways, I wanted to make sure everybody had an ideas for a schedule. I know I let you know periodically what's what, but people get confused, and I understand I get confused. I mean, this afternoon, I went home. I was exhausted. I laid down. I woke up. And I'm like, what time is it? Where am I? <laughs> Like, oh, yeah, I need to be somewhere at the station. So anyways, first Monday of the month, just as a reminder, is the Psychic Gallery. And actually, next month is the holiday on the first Monday. And sometimes I change things around. But I thought, you know what? You folks will be done with your barbecue by 730. So eat up and then come on out to the Psychic Gallery. And again, it's the first Monday of every month. So if you miss it one month, you can always make it to another month. And um, actually... On the Psychic Gallery page, which also you can find on my website, there are some comments from people who have attended. So if you're thinking, yeah, I don't know, go see what they have to say and see if you feel that it's something that would work for you. Now, just because I am conducting and facilitating the Psychic Gallery doesn't mean that I'm not on the air, which in other words means there's a repeat on Mondays or a rebroadcast, whatever you like to call it. Uh, my producer keeps promising me that he's going to actually come out to the gallery, but we'll see if that happens at some point. And then we can share with you not only live feed, but also the event, at least part of it live, because the event's two hours and, you know, the show's a half hour, so yeah, give or take. But anyways, so again, first Monday of the month. And uh, as I said, when I'm not at the gallery, I am here at the station. Anyway, look at it. You tune in and you get a show <laughs> so that makes it easy okay wants to share the third monday of the month i know lots to remember right think monday's psychic monday so you have me on the air as well as in person at the gallery and the third monday of the month we actually it's super monday you see I'm trying to get you information and i'm confused M first monday super monday <laughs> <laughs> because we have the psychic gallery and we're here on the radio Third, win, third Monday. Oh my gosh, I think I need to go back to sleep today. Anyways, third Monday is Psychic Monday, which means you can call in, ask psychic questions. Uh, whether I'm on the air by myself or have a guest, it all revolves around psychic phenomena. So something to keep in mind. I mentioned uh, previously that I have the very beautiful and very talented Jacqueline uh, Rip oh my gosh, Ripstein, coming on, and she'll be on the 25th, and we'll be talking about her new book and uh, some of her artwork, and um, she's just amazing. She's actually involved with the UN as well to help with peace, so you'll definitely want to tune into that show if you can't make next week's and get your psychic uh, fix. 
then make sure you tune in for the following week. So let's see, did I cover everything? I think so. Oh, what you don't know is while my um, office mate was out of town on a little vacay, I redid the office. <laughs> Poor thing, she came in <laughs> to the entranceway and went, what's going on? <laughs> Everything was kind of changed around. So we have new furniture and um, new artwork. So if you haven't been up for a while and you want to come visit and see what we did, what I did, come on in. Happy to have you. And I want to let you know, two meditation classes will begin again in September. I kind of took a break for the summer because in earnest, a lot of folks are out of town. They're busy. They're whatever. You know, things going on. Truthfully, I do a little running around during the summer too. So it worked out better. But I'm looking forward to the first week in September, uh, starting meditation again. And if you have an interest, I would suggest you get in touch with me before I even put anything up on the web because I will let you sign up in advance for $99 for five classes. Whereas afterwards, when I actually post, you're going to find that it's 130 So you might want to save a little money if you'd like to take advantage of the classes. So I think now I covered the schedule. It's a good thing I have a little... Um, thing to work with so that it tells me where I'm supposed to be when I'm supposed to be there. And actually that's what I want to talk to you about this evening, time. And also the idea of how we perceive time, how we interact with it, how we attract it. I think back and on the way here to the station I was thinking about when I was a kid and it seems I've always had issues with time. <laughs> when I was a little kid my mother would wake me up to go to school and I'd say, oh, five more minutes, oh, five more minutes, oh, five more minutes. You know, an hour later, she's yelling, you've got to get up. You're going to be late. <laughs> and, you know, you do the mad dash to get dressed and run out the door. Okay, so not a lot has changed. <laughs> Part of that, though, is I've always been a night owl. And even as a, as a little kid, I, I'm up late for whatever reason. I, I tend to create and connect better with the world late at night. And that's fine as long as I don't have to get up at 7 in the morning. I have a friend who I was chatting with and she said, oh, I'm going to change my pattern. I'm going to do it. And I said, well, how long have you been doing this? She goes, oh, since I was an infant. I said, what do you mean since you were an infant? She said, well, her mother um, was alone a lot in the evenings because her father worked and uh, late at night. You know, he was like off during the day and then worked at night. And so their schedules were all screwy. And the long and the short of it is she would keep the infant up all night and the toddler up all night. <laughs> because she wants a company. So even when she was in grade school and even in high school, she would stay up late at night because it was kind of habitual. So here she is now in her and um, she's saying, I want to change. So she made a real good conscious effort for about two weeks. And I think out of the two weeks, she was able to actually stay up during the day and go to sleep at what somebody would consider a reasonable hour for maybe two days. <laughs> I really believe that some people just, their inner clocks work differently than others. You know, they connect differently with the universe at large. It's a matter of what your comfort level is. And, you know, I think too about how we have less time now than probably ever before. And the reason I say that is because we are so connected with electronics. We have, you know, the web. We know more about the world than ever before. 24-7, we can see what's going on in Guatemala or what's going on in Iran or what's going on in China. And if something is disturbing there and we're sensitive, we are going to take that with us. And we may not go directly to sleep. Or we go to sleep and it's restless because, you know, we're concerned about all of these things. Whereas years and years ago, even with the telephones, and I know some of you under a certain age <laughs> won't remember this, but we didn't have answering machines at one point. <laughs> you know, your phone rang, and if you weren't there, you didn't get it. We didn't have a phone attached to us. Before we had the phones that we carried around, we had beepers. And again, a cer certain ages are gone. what? What are you talking about? You know, there's so many things that if you were born, um, let's say, 1960s or earlier, you would know about playing outside and getting dirty and um, the clock was different because your parents would say when it gets dark out come in and dark out could be five o'clock one night it could be seven o'clock another depending on the time of the year and the season and you would adjust nowadays it's not like that you know there is a, a clock you have to adhere to because you're doing a presentation because um, you don't want to miss something on a particular interaction on the web, whatever it is. And 
this is not to say that before we didn't also have commitments. For instance, if somebody was doing a speaking engagement that they were supposed to be there on time, of course. But it's that after effect that's different. People would write notes, actual letters, you know, that you put in the mail with, with an envelope. So you didn't sit and type or hunt and peck and didn't put out, let's say, 50 things that were instantaneous. The time itself gave you a moment to appreciate what was going on. So for instance, somebody did something nice for you. Today, you go, oh, that's really great. I want to send them an email or I'll send them a text. And that's lovely, but two seconds later, it's gone. It, it's as if we're not savoring the moment. And years back, somebody did something nice for you and you'd say, you know, that was really thoughtful of so-and-so. I think I'm going to go buy them a beautiful card and I'm going to go uh, really find something lovely. And you find that card and then you go home and you fill it out and you're like, wow, you know, you remember what it was that they did for you. You remember that gratitude. And since everything is energy, and we've talked about that before, that energy is transmitted in the envelope. There's only so much that's transmitted across the wavelengths. I mean, you really have to be hypersensitive to energy to pick up on the vibration of something in an email or a text. Some of us do, a lot of us don't. And this is why a lot of people complain that when they write a text or they get an email, that things are misconstrued because there is no expression, there is no depth to it. Now, if you know the person really well, you may be able to ascertain what they meant. If you know their humor, you may be able to realize, okay, they're being silly or they're being um, ironic in that moment. Very different though, getting something that's handwritten and you can see the impression on the paper being deeper when they're expressing something passionate or going up when they're talking about something joyous or just even holding it in your hand and feeling the paper allowed you to, again, take that moment and feel what was it. They weren't just giving you words, they were giving you a gift back. So if you had done something nice, you in return receive something nice. Now this is not to say that nobody does that today because there still are some people, but I'm trying to bring up the idea of time and what we want to attract to us. So if you think in terms of, I'm always too busy, I don't have time to respond to somebody, I don't have time to send a note, I don't have time for whatever the myriad of reasons are, then what are you saying really? You're saying, one, that you're always affirming, I don't have time, and you put that out into the universe so you get more of the same. Again, energy attracts energy, all right? And you're also saying that the time that it takes to give gratitude or, appreci or appreciation has no value to you. That someone else, well, if you don't have time for them, you're not making time. Because there's something, tr some truth to, if it's important enough to you, you make the time. You hear about these people who are, for instance, in high power positions, who during bike week, and if you don't know what bike week is, it's when a lot of motorcyclists get together. They take off from the, their high power jobs. A lot of them are attorneys. A lot of them are people that uh, are white collar. You do have a mixture eclectic wise of different types of people, but there are a lot of them that really are in high power positions where a lot of people rely on them. And they go, no, I'm taking the time. And they take that time off to go to bike week. And they have bike week in different places or around the world. But I'm thinking in terms of Florida, there is one here that's only a uh, a few hours away from the South Florida area. It's in Central Florida. And what's kind of cool about this is you meet these people and you think, wow, they ride a bike? Wow, they're they're dressed in like blue jeans and a t-shirt? Wow, they're, they're a regular person. It's important to them. It's important for them to have that moment of respite. It's important for them to have that moment of joy. It's important for them to connect with other people without feeling obligated to do, without feeling the need to always be on and feeling that they don't have time. So just something to consider, okay? Um, if you're wondering, you know, how does this fit in as far as metaphysically or holistically? Well, the truth of the matter is if you're always feeling rushed, you tend to create, I'll say, a stagnant or a acetic energy, an acetic environment within your body. And that means you're more prone to being ill, catching colds, um, 
having aches and pains, feeling restless, feeling disoriented, um, having absent-mindedness. You know, lots of things that people take for granted oftentimes are shifted just by allowing yourself to have more time. And it's funny for me because um, my family always says, oh, she's late. She's gonna be late to her own funeral. And yet when it comes to work, the majority of the time I'm on time. When it comes to being at the station, the majority of the time I'm on time. My producer again is shaking his head, but the truth is I'm here when I'm supposed to be here. <laughs> My point being, it is more important for me to be relaxed than it is to feel out of sorts, to run to be somewhere. So what if I'm five minutes late? I mean, really think about this. Other than someone getting married or a funeral where somebody is expecting you to be there and you don't want to run in and interrupt them, then so what if you're a few minutes late? If you're meeting at a restaurant or you're even, I'll give an example. I have a buddy and he and I go to the movies a lot and it's kind of funny. It's always a guess to see who's going to be there on time. I've got much better than him, I have to say, and hopefully he's watching this so that he'll call me later and go, you know, you're not supposed to tell that. Anyways, it's it's funny because I'll be looking at the clock going, okay, movie's supposed to start at, let's say, 10.50, and here it is, 10.45. And then I remind myself, oh, wait, you know, they have all the previews, they have um, people getting settled. So if he shows up two minutes beforehand, we're still there on time. We still get to see the film on time. And honestly, the preview if I catch them, I catch them. If I don't, I don't. My point being, again, there's a certain level of peace to that, and there is a certain level of comfort just being in your own space, just allowing yourself to say, all right, you know, is this important, is this not? If you can get into that groove, you will find that you actually have more time. There's an old saying, haste makes waste. And I mean, it's old, like my, my grandmother, my nana used to say this. And it really has to do with, if you are rushing about, you make errors. If you are rushing about, sometimes you end up doing things twice. And I'll give you an example. You go to walk out the door, and you're headed out somewhere, and you get in the car, and you're halfway there, and you go, oh, oh I forgot. Whatever it was, you forgot, and you have to run back. So you didn't actually save any time. You actually needed more time. So, you know, give a little thought to that. Anyways, we are going to take a quick break, and that is if uh, my buddy in the sound room is there. I don't know, I think he ran away. <laughs> Ken, you there? <laughs> Maybe not. Okay. I might be a little ahead today. How do you like that? Time-wise, I'm four minutes ahead. <laughs> And here I thought I was late. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. So I guess we'll wait four minutes. Bottom line is think in terms of what do you want to attract into your world? Do you want to attract peace? Do you want to attract calm? Do you want to attract success? All of these things are interconnected and they are interconnected with your perception of time as well as your perception of how to orchestrate the different events. Now, obviously, if there is something that you desire and you ignore it, it's very unlikely that it's going to fall into your lap. By the same token, if all you do is work on something and you never allow yourself any time to breathe in between, then you do not think clear-headed enough to be able to complete everything. Now, if you would see what's going on here in the station, you would laugh. <laughs> I've got really good peripheral vision. <laughs> I'm just going to share. <laughs> the producers are, are pointing at each other for <laughs> different things that are being said. <laughs> I love it. Anyways, the, the point being, take a moment while we go on break, and I know it's not a full four minutes, but we can do it anyways. <laughs> and uh, think in terms of what do you want? What would you like to see manifest in your world? And how is it that you are using your time? We'll be back in just a moment with the Hallie Elise Show. Thank you. Bob, did you see Hallie Elise in the paper? Who? The empowerment psychic, Hallie Elise. They did a two-page write-up. The columnist was enthralled. Hallie went right to an issue that she was dealing with. And looking at HallieElise.com right now. What are you thinking? Should we schedule an appointment? Matter of fact, yes. You have issues with Sue and me, my business. Take a look at her background. It's impressive, and she has decades of experience. I want to put it on my iPad. What's her info? Empowerment Psychic Hallie Elise. HallieElise.com. 561 755 
2166. Spell it. H-A-L-L-E-Y-E-L-I-S-E dot com. So it's HallieLease dot com and 561-755-2166, right? 561-755-2166. That's it. You're listening to Empowerment Psychic, Hallie Elise, and she invites you to visit her website for more information about all that she does at HallieElise.com. Now, back to your host, Empowerment Psychic, Hallie Elise. I don't need the finger. <laughs> Did you catch that? Hi, we're back. <laughs> Um, it's funny that the uh, break <laughs> bit a funny place. We're having a good time here today, um, talking about time and you know moving things along and being on time. And then um, I was being razzed on the break because I kind of ran in. I took a, a little nap earlier and I overslept. As I said, you know, if it's late night, if we filmed at midnight, we wouldn't have any problems. Actually, I don't know if any of you remember the Push and Pull show, that, and it was called Push and Pull at Midnight that I used to do years ago. And our show was at midnight on Saturdays, and we were always on time. We never had a problem. <laughs> Anyways, before the break, I had suggested give some thought about you know what it is that you want. And what I'm going to suggest is, in as much as you might think that you do not have time, make a commitment to yourself to give yourself three minutes a day to A, daydream, and B, write. And if you're thinking, well, how is that supposed to do anything? Allow yourself to close your eyes for a moment and, and really anticipate what does it look like if you had what you wanted. And then sit down and write it out and be as elaborate as you can. And even if you're thinking, what? It, you know, it doesn't make sense. I already thought about it. Three minutes. I'm not suggesting that you spend an hour. I'm suggesting three minutes. Do you think your life is worth three minutes a day to have what you want? You'd be amazed at how when we feed our subconscious minds with what we want and we put it out into the universe on a consistent basis, how it comes to form. Uh, Think and Grow Rich, if you're familiar with the book, Napoleon Hill, um, amazing book amazing 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 it's probably in its 60th edition and there is a page in there that talks about how you should think and how you should speak and how you should set things up before you go to sleep at night so something to think about i hope you enjoyed this evening's show like i said if you missed any part of it check the website hallielise.com and you can check out the archive i thank you and next week remember psychic monday see said it right <laughs> Good night, all. Be enchanted and delighted. Connect each week here on WNN for the Halle Elise Show. Also on Facebook and at HalleElise.com. Thanks for tuning in. The opinions expressed on the preceding sponsor.